the jet around seven. Where are you going? New York. Is there anything I can help you with? I don't think so. Okay, who's up first? You're seeing Spencer and his attorney at two o'clock, then Kathy Grant and her attorney. I hope we can avoid any more lawsuits. It's a public relations nightmare. Yeah, I just hope I can get some of my money back from that one. Well, leave him alone. Brown! Hey, Brown! Up here! Take it easy on him, okay? As if he were my own son. Want to bet he doesn't make it up the stairs? You're lazy, Brown. Your days are numbered, kid. Yes, sir. How you doing, Brown? Feeling okay? Never better. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear it. A couple of these expansion teams have been calling about you. you. Got some crazy idea that I might want to trade you just because you blew a few games for us. Hey, anybody can have a slump. Excuse me, I, I'm sorry. Uh, what'd you say? I said anybody can have a slump. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. And I told him, just watch how well he's going to play for the rest of the season. So if you hear any rumors about being traded, don't believe it. You're part of the family. Very subtle. Yeah, like you, I suppose, huh? Well, let me tell you something, kiddo. It's about time you learn how to handle people, okay? That's subtle enough for you? You know, Spencer could become a real problem unless we can come up with a settlement. Why are you so worried about this hockey player? Probably one of the most popular stars we ever had, that's all. Uh, all fans think that professional athletes are greedy and overpaid, but they also have a short memory. Well, Spencer doesn't. He remembers all the promises you made. He's got nothing on paper. All he's got is a bad temper. No, I was with you when you told Spencer you'd take care of him. Now, that's very interesting. Read my lips, because I'm only going to say it once. I was alone. Get it? Kathy! Ah, <laughs> oh, you're looking wonderful. How are you? Thatcher, this is my attorney, Wendell Parker. Mr. Horton. Any objections if I um, have a private moment with your client? None, if she doesn't. What the hell do you think you're doing? Just asking for what's coming to me. Oh, why didn't you come to me? Why drag a lawyer in? What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Absolutely not. I see. Well, my dear, if my memory serves me correctly, I think it was you who deceived me. That's low, Thatcher. Yes, but is it low enough? You gotta promise me. I promise. I won't take his arm off at the socket. I won't even break his nose. You sure you want me to do this? Yes, I'm sure. Bobby, I don't negotiate contracts. It's not what I do. I should have some high-powered attorney for this. Look, I've been through these guys before. They took me for every penny, and it didn't turn out any better. You I trust. Okay, then. Here's the deal. The only way I can negotiate with Horton is to make him think that I can roast him in front of a jury. But if he thinks even for a second that his attorney can make you nuts... Looking at Mr. Sub-Zero. Today is not just practice. So be prepared. I'll do everything to provoke you. I know a little about delivering under pressure. Two playoffs in the championship finals. I remember. Yeah, you do. It's just the entire sports world has forgotten. I bet he knows how I feel. A couple of more off games, Horton will trade him. Fame. How fast it all goes away. Come on, let's show him you still got it. Bobby! How's it going? Kathy, yeah, things are great. How are you? Oh, terrific. <laughs> Well, I almost as well as you do. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, this is Ken Malansky, my lawyer. Kathy Grant, tennis superstar. Hey, I'm a fan. Never forget that time you beat Martina on that tiebreaker in Paris. Neither will I. <laughs> well, we're due upstairs. Give him hell. Hey, you too. Now, Mr. Horton, let me go over a few things about depositions so we won't have any misunderstandings. Young man, I have been deposed more times than you're likely to do the job in your entire career. I know I'm under oath, so why don't you just go at me best you can. Give it both barrels, okay? Right. 
Mr. Horton, are you the owner of a hockey team uh, known let as... Let me help you out here. Look, I own this arena and the teams that go with it. Um, I employed your client as a player on my hockey team, and one year he even started. Turning your attention to the playing season a few uh, I'm years sorry, ago... Excuse me just a minute. Thank you, dear. Sorry about this. <laughs> Doctor's orders. Oh. Okay, now, um... Where were we? Was that the year that my client not only started, but was team captain? Two seasons ago, uh, yes, he was. And did he injure his right knee in the last game of the regular season before the playoffs? Uh, yes, he did. <clears throat> Terrible thing. And did the doctor tell you he ran the risk of permanent injury if he played again before having surgery on the knee? Well, now, I believe there were several medical opinions. That could have been one of them. Lord knows I paid enough doctor bills for your boy there. <laughs> Sir, just answer my questions. Sorry. Didn't you come to my client and ask him to lead the team in the playoffs? I did not. Didn't you tell him that the only chance the team had of winning the Stanley Cup was if he played? No, as a matter of fact, I had two players ready in his position who were just as good, some say even better. Now, don't give me that look, Bobby. You know as well as I do. You started the year hot as a pistol, but the last third, you kind of fell apart. Who are you going to replace me with, huh? Rogers? At my worst, I'll skate him off the ice. Isn't it a fact that you promised my client that if he played and was injured, you'd take care of him? It is not. Isn't it a fact that you promised him a job in management that would be equal to the balance of his contract? No way. Come on, Counselor. My entire front office doesn't make as much as I was paying him. Isn't it a fact that you Son, even... the fact is, you're a boy here, and I mean no disrespect to somebody who has been a good player. The truth is... The boy here has some big expenses. I mean, he got a little greedy. Women, fast cars, some say cocaine. Hey, that is a lie. Let's go off the record, please. I did not personally believe it, but like I said, he had a lot of expenses. Sure, he wanted to play hell. He needed money. Hey, what I wanted was a championship. Stop it, Bobby. Took a chance, and he lost. Too bad, I'm sorry, but that's the way it goes. Got in the fast lane, you couldn't handle it. You got greedy, kid. That's pathetic, but you're washed up. You son of a Bobby, get off. I'm fine. That's enough for today. We'll reschedule this deposition at a Wrong time when... counselor. This deposition is finished now. So is your client, so why don't you just leave, hmm? Who the hell does he think he is? He is lying. That's enough. No, it is not enough. Not for him. I'll tear his head off. Maybe then he'll tell the truth. You were on your way to New York. What happened? Uh, we had a little equipment failure on the plane. They're working on it now. I'll just fly out again in the morning. So, uh, tonight I'm yours. Can I ask you something? Sure. You hear me when I came in just now? Mm-hmm. Could have been anybody. You seem pretty relaxed. 
You should know by now, but not much frightens me. Maybe you were expecting somebody? <laughs> Would you care? <laughs> I might. Darling, you know that I'm as true to you as you are to me. Yes, I'm sure you are. much better idea. Why don't you join me? I might just do that. You might just join me or you might just break my neck. Don't go away. I'll be right back. I need to leave a message for you. Good morning, Mr. Malansky. May I assume you're down here looking for work? I'm Robert Spencer's attorney. What are you holding them on? I do believe you have your work cut out for you. Why? Thatcher Horton was found shot to death at his home last night. Horton? We found the gun in your client's car. And here the poor boy just can't seem to remember where he was. And there's another thing. Eric, would you be kind enough to pass me that lab report, please, sir? The lab confirms that gun was the same gun that was used to kill Thatcher Horton. We are now charging your client with the crime of murder. Would you give me a few minutes with my client, please? Ken, I didn't kill anyone. What happened? I don't remember. But the last thing I remember, I was in this bar... Don't ask me which one. I wake up this morning, the cops are pounding on my Did door. They have a I don't know. I mean, they're all over the place. And then one of them comes in and says he found a gun that had recently been fired. Was it your gun? I don't have a gun. What I have is a splitting headache. Can you get me out of here? Harry? Yes. You haven't touched your breakfast. I'm reading a brief. Your eggs will get cold. <coughs> oh, I finally have all the plans for the fishing trip. I thought the fishing trip was canceled. Judge Blaine and I have arranged everything. He and Mr. Higgins are going to meet in San Francisco day after tomorrow. And then you're all going to Vancouver. 
Two weeks of fishing with a judge who's never ruled for me and a lawyer who can only talk about his fees. Ooh. Perry, you need a vacation. I've had a vacation. <laughs> Too late to change your mind. Mason. We go before the judge tomorrow morning. Now, if we can get you out on bail... Oh, wait, wait, wait. If? Ken, you got to get me out of here. It's not quite that simple, Mr. Spencer. Don't forget you've been charged with murder. Yeah, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent. Besides, I can't actually prove I did do it. What about the gun? Any idea how it got in your car? Look, I already told Ken I don't remember how I got home, even where I was. And your threat to violence against Mr. Horton. Listen, if they put away everybody who hated Horton, there wouldn't be enough jails to hold them. Hey, whose side are you on anyway? I'm looking at the prosecution's case. Motive, opportunity, murder weapon. I've seen men convicted on less. Yeah, well, then why are you wasting your time talking to me? Besides, I don't have the money to pay a big-time lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. I'm only here as a favor to Ken. Oh, this is a favor? You come down here and tell me I'm definitely going to prison? Hey, idiot. Man, you obviously don't believe me. I mean, you think I'm a liar, maybe even a killer. Man, why don't you take a walk? Good idea. Brilliant. What? What? You're really worried about Bobby's chances, aren't you? The evidence against him is substantial. He has you. I felt better about that too. Oh, Ken, he can't be in better hands. Uh, I don't know, Amy. Besides, you have me. And I'm not referring to the fact that we've now been engaged five months, three weeks, and two days. I meant that professionally. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm sure you've noticed that it's been weeks. Well, months, actually, since I've asked to be involved in your work. I have noticed and been grateful. But why do I think that's about to end? Before you develop an unfortunate attitude, well, there are a few things I think you should be aware of. Like what? Well, like for the past few months, I've been enrolled in the university's police science program. You what? Investigative techniques, criminalistics, procedures... I think I'm really ready to help you, uh, Ken. Amy. Ken, I don't want to be a dilettante all my life. I want to do something constructive. And I've been working really hard to prepare myself so that we can be a team. I was hoping that you'd be pleased. <laughs> I am pleased. And proud and impressed. But this is a murder trial. So? So I'm not sure that I'm even up to it. Much less uh, me. Well... Ken, you really don't have any confidence in me, do you? I, I never said that. You don't have to. Amy, try to understand. Oh, I understand. You're worried about this case. And since it's a serious case, you don't want me underfoot. That's not what I'm worried about. Oh, well, what are you worried about? I was wrong to represent Bobby Spencer at the deposition. And a murder trial's worse. It's out of the question. I'm too close to this guy. <sighs> Can you go back to Perry? I doubt it. Well, if you change your mind, he's giving another lecture at the police science department tomorrow. I know, because I'm going. Good night. Amy, the door's locked. You see, with your keen deductive powers, you certainly don't need me. I'm really sorry about that. Bob's not really like that. Dan, just... you've got some real problems with your case. The main one is your client. I know, and I know I'm asking a lot. Ken. I need more than advice. I need you on the case. Everybody has the first murder trial. This case needs you, not someone first time out. Now, before you make any snap judgments about Bob, let me just tell you this. He and I practically grew up together. 
He's from a very poor family, and his father deserted him when he was 10, and he's been supporting a bunch of them ever since. When he lost his income from hockey, it wasn't just him that was hurt. It was seven other people who depend on him for their livelihood. Robert Spencer is innocent. He couldn't commit this crime. How much of that would have been your opening remarks in the civil suit? Well, I... First part. Very effective. Especially the part about the seven people. However, I'd specify who they were, give them names so the jury sees them as real people, not just numbers. On the whole, not bad. When we were in law school, you told us never to get personally involved with our clients. Well, I can't help it. I'm too close to this. He's my friend. I know he made a lousy impression on you, and I haven't got a right to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Please take the case. If you can't do it for him, then do it out of friendship for me. You want me to break my own rule? Take the case for a friend? Well, let me tell you. When we get to court, if there's a summation, it's all yours. $250,000 bail. How'd you swing the money, by the way? I didn't. Mr. Mason did. Oh. Uh, about the bail. Thank you. Listen, uh, I may have been a little rough on you yesterday. I just want you to know that it wasn't personal. Neither is what I'm going to tell you. I got you out on bail because Ken asked me to. I also like having my clients looking healthy and fit and confident when they walk into court. So I booked you into a room here. I don't want you to leave this hotel. There's a great health club downstairs, and I hope you use it. Under no circumstances are you to have alcohol, visitors, or talk to the press. Is that clear? Well, maybe I should just go back to jail. Maybe you should. Any questions? Yeah. Who's paying your fee? No fee. Every decade or so, I take on a client like you just for the hell of it. There's his key. All right. Who would you pick to a friend, Spencer? Probably someone who saw him threaten Horton earlier in the day. And who might that be? People in the waiting room. Kathy Grant. The tennis star? Horton's son, Stuart, and somebody else, Temple Brown. The basketball player. You really think one of them could have been the murderer? Well, it's certainly possible. But which of them had a motive? All right, I'm going to check around inside, and you... And I'll check around outside. Well, Mrs. Horton, outside of a bit of black... Very few mortals would realize the depth of your grief. Coffee? No, thank you. You know, if I were to tell you that my husband and I had a marriage based on love, you'd know that I was lying. Patrick and I, however, were friendly, if not true friends. How's that for honesty? Refreshing, as far as it goes. I hope that means I'm a suspect. I have always wanted to be considered capable of murder. As long as I was innocent, of course. I'll be sure to make a note of that. Now, just before you married your late husband, there were great rumors about a prenuptial agreement. I'm sure you'll find out they were more than just rumors. I remember them so well. The agreement provided that I get half a million dollars a year for three years 
if my husband divorced me. Nothing if I divorced him. And they say they repealed the Fugitive Slave Act. They also say he had a new girlfriend. <laughs> he always had a new girlfriend. This one was supposed to be serious. Relatively speaking, Thatcher strayed. He was not stolen. Now, if there's nothing else... No, no. Nothing at the moment. However, I'm sure we'll meet again. Amy. Of course. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? Working. And thank goodness I already photographed where the killer landed before you completely Working decimated... on my case? Oh, is this your case? When I was hired as Della's assistant, all I knew was that some young green lawyer was going to help me. Amy, before. you went to Perry Mason behind my back. To be more precise, I went to Dallas Street and proposed an entry-level position for myself. You know I exactly what I mean, Amy. You finished? Quite. Well, I see you've met Della's new assistant. Yeah. Let's uh, take a look at all of this. Ken, would you go to where the killer was? You can stay on this side of the wall. Now... I'm in the spot the police marked as the place Horton was standing when he was shot. Ken, how far apart are we? About 20 feet. At least 20 yards. All's forgiven. You can come back now. Horton had just gotten himself a drink. He was probably moving around. Like that. We shot three times in a pattern no larger than two inches by a killer 20 yards away, shooting through curtains. The killer was a hired gun. Yeah, the average person about to commit a crime of passion would have their heart pounding, their hands shaking, and they... Well, according to everything I've read, anyway. Expertly planned and executed. Only a professional could have done it. Any of our suspects could have hired the killer. Even if they had an alibi at the time of the murder, they could still be guilty. Top marks to both of you. Well, as long as that first row of seats is 30 feet from the baseline, it should be okay. Let's go look. Oh, again? Ken Holansky. Sure, Bobby's attorney. Could I talk to you for a few minutes? Of course. I'll meet you downstairs, okay? You know, I don't think for a second that Bobby did it. I'll tell you anything I can to help him out. Thank you. Uh, how well do you know Thatcher Horton? We were in a business deal together, organizing a women's celebrity pro tennis tour. <laughs> Whatever happened to that? I remember reading all the advanced publicity, and then suddenly it was canceled. Well, he said he couldn't do it. But you quit the pro circuit in order to go into business with him. I felt I was beginning to burn out. It seemed like a good opportunity. Your contract with Mr. Horton required that you render exclusive services in exchange for very little money. You were giving up the possibility of millions on the pro tour. I would have been part owner, and I would have made it up on the back end. Look, I thought you wanted me to help you with Bobby. Why these questions? It's my job to see who might have had reason to kill Thatcher Horton. How I may have felt about Thatcher Horton wouldn't have made any difference. I was busy taping a late night talk show when he was shot. About uh, 300 people saw me. Satisfied? It's possible that the killer was a hired gun. What's that got to do with me? Didn't you threaten him with a lawsuit over the collapse of your business partnership? He was going to settle with me. What made you think he'd treat you any differently than anybody else? He would have settled with me. Excuse me. 
I'm looking for Stuart Horton. I haven't seen anybody. I just work on plants. Well, that's certainly a healthy bromeliad. What's your secret? No secret. I change the soil. That's interesting. This particular orchid doesn't grow in soil. Oh, really? Well, I'll keep that in mind. Yes. Keep that in mind. Mr. Mason. Yes? Mr. Horton's running a little late. I'll wait. Pain, frustration, and disappointment. It's not religion or politics, it's money. Take a look at this. Too bad we can't cash in. Offering $50,000 for information about who shot Thatcher Horton. I thought they caught the guy who did it. Maybe they caught the wrong guy. You know anyone selling hot guns? Charlie, you're not doing a little business on the side, are you? <laughs> I got a workout. I don't want to talk about it no more. Looks like a moment to divide and conquer. You take Temple Brown. Right. Only authorized personnel in here. I'm Robert Spencer's attorney. Yeah? So? So I talked to the bartender at one of the clubs Spencer visited the night of the murder. He says you were there and that you bought my client a drink. Yeah, so you say. Look, we can do this one of two ways. You can talk to me now or in court. I don't much care which. Your choice. My choice, huh? Well, my choice is to get on with my workout. If you want to talk, you keep up. Sorry about your father. If you don't mind, I have a few questions. Well, of course. Were you and he very close? Well, my mother died when I was 15, and after that, all my father and I had was each other. Thanks, Danny. But he sent you away to school. Yes, that's right, military boarding school. Which was very good for me. It taught me discipline for the first time, then college. But we spent every summer and all my vacations together. <laughs> Sounds like a great life. Mr. Mason, my father was a difficult man. It wasn't easy being his son. How about being his employee? Worse. No longer a problem, is it? All his wealth, position, and power are yours now. Eventually, it would have been mine anyway. He was grooming me to take over paint a very different picture than the one I've gotten. I was told your father paid you no more than a secretary, gave you no authority. And from his memos, I gathered he knew for certain you were afraid to leave your job or afraid to stay. Well, I know one thing for certain, Mr. Mason. I'm not afraid of you. Spencer's guilty. He's going to pay for it. I saw him at the club. I even bought him a drink. Feel sorry for the fool. Fool? Trusting what? Even if he says what he claims he did, the man's word wasn't worth spit. What time did you see my client that night? More or less. It's hard to say. I was with a lot of people. Last thing I wanted to talk about was that old man. Sounds like you didn't like Horton much. My father was a real hard dude, but smart. 
You almost had to respect him. What about the son? I saw you with him today. What was that all about? The son's stupid. Thinks the way to get me to play better is to threaten to trade me to an expansion team. I've been your best year. Well, cold in the clutch a couple of times. That happens to everybody. It's not what the sports writers are saying. They're really sticking it to you. Yeah. I'd like to see one of them put it in. 17,000 people screaming at you. 22 feet out. One second on the clock. Played somewhere. High school? Some in college? Yeah. You almost good. <laughs> These are plastered all over the arena. Bailiff at court had one. I've been passing them out. I have six high school kids helping. $50,000 reward for information revealing seller or purchaser of Thatcher Horton murder gun. 357 Desert Eagle automatic. Serial numbers filed. Cracked handle and silencer. Straightforward, not too dramatic. Also, $100,000 for information leading to the identity of the true killer. An incentive program. I wanted to appeal to the truly greedy as well as the borderline weasel. It's incredible. Thank you. I don't think that's what Ken had in mind. Uh, honey, what you've done is... Extremely dangerous. You could be hurt. But it's so practical. Amy... A lot of people will read this. You even left your home phone number. Of course. I didn't want Della bothered with all those calls. But I didn't leave my home address. Besides, who would hurt me? The killer. Oh. So, what are we going to do? Well, she'll have to stay close to you. I'm afraid you'll have to put aside whatever disagreements you have, at least for the moment. I'll stay close, but I'd rather not. I'll stay close to her. But I'd rather not either. So would you wait a minute, Amy? Charlie left here about an hour ago. Just ran out the door. Where? Not a clue. Except that she was real excited. Like winning the lottery or something. Money. Lots of money. Like falling from the sky. I mean, one minute she was reading that flyer, the next minute she was gone. You know, she must know something about that Thatcher Horton murder. Hey, if Charlie gets that cash, you tell him that Al's entitled to a half of it. <laughs> I was the one who gave him the flyer. <laughs> Mr. Mason. Oh, Mr. Spencer, Della Street. We've spoken on the phone. I can't get so much as a beer in this hotel. I told you, no alcohol. I don't like being treated like a child. If, when this is over, you are a free man, you can have a thousand drinks of anything you like. Until then, try iced tea. Hey, I just got your message, dear. Yeah, I was looking for Ken. Do you know where he is? He was supposed to be with you. 
Oh, no, no, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Listen, um, if he comes back to the hotel, will you tell him I got a message on my answering machine? Some woman named Charlie wants to meet at 5.30. She says she sold this killer the gun. Someone's at the door. I gotta go. Bye. Sorry. Nice watch. Listen, what I'm interested in is a 357 Desert Eagle with filed off serial numbers and a cracked handle. Sold one like that last week. How about letting me in? Uh, no, we can talk here. Uh, can you tell me about it? People don't give their names. Well, can you describe them? Not really. Look, what I expected was the name or at least a description of the buyer. That's why there's a reward. Listen. Why don't we go out for a drink, some dinner? Maybe my memory will come back. Uh, I don't think so. I have plans with my fiance. All right. Again. She's late. She said 5.30. You're sure this is the right place? Yes. I think so. Who's that? Charlie? Are you Amy? We were worried you wouldn't show. Lady, we need to talk to you. Yeah, and I need you like I need a funeral. Charlie, a man's life could depend upon your testimony. We really yeah, well, my life depends on getting out of town. You blew it. I'm out of here. Well, we did blow it. to make coffee. Oh, thanks. Just one cup. You don't have to feel compromised. I won't seduce you. Look, I really can't stay. Ken? Someone took the tape from my answering machine. That's how the man knew about the meeting with Charlie. Who was in the house? anyone in? Amy, that means somebody broke in. Oh, God. The man who came to see me today. Maybe he's the killer. And I let him get away. Oh, Ken. I made such a mess of this. I'm a failure as a detective. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Look, we, we wouldn't have gotten this close without you. And don't forget, you can identify him if we see him again. That could be very important. You think so? Absolutely.
Danny, it would have been so easy for you to tell me that this is a perfect example of why I shouldn't be involved in this at all. But, yeah, well, but you didn't. You stood by me when I needed you. Ken, you've given me the strength to go on. I have? Definitely. All I need is a good night's rest, and, well, tomorrow's another day. You don't learn, do you? What do you mean? Well, what I mean is you almost got the three of us killed today, and you're ready to start up again tomorrow, so nothing happened. I think I liked you better when I was weak and vulnerable. Well, I don't think we should discuss this tonight. Yes, if I were you, I'd leave while I was ahead. Come on. What are you doing? You're not staying here. A man broke into this house. It's not safe. You're staying with me. Now, come on. Well, when you put it like that, what can I say? I thought you said you wouldn't seduce me. I have to pick up some of Dad's papers from his study. See you every day, but I just couldn't take the chance for your sake. For my sake? Sweetheart, I don't blame you, but if people found wait out. Wait a minute, about... wait a minute. You think that I killed him? Honey, I can't blame you. I should hope not. I assume that you did it. Me? Oh, oh my, look at your face. I can't believe how well you lie. I'm going to have to reconsider a couple of things you have told me with so much conviction. I hope I'm not interrupting family business. Actually, we were just talking about the murder. Anything new on the investigation? Yes, that's uh, why I'm here. More questions, Mr. Horton. I'll be in my father's office if you need me. All right, ask away. I just hope this theory is a little more interesting than your last theory. I think it will hold your interest. The phone call to your stepson on the night of the murder. Phone call? The records from the phone company say it took place almost at the time of the shooting. We know that because the call to the police was less than two minutes later. Is this leading somewhere? Yes. You're telling me who placed the call? Well, let me see. I was in the bathtub when the shooting happened. So apparently my husband called his son. I would guess to tell him that he wasn't going to New York after all. Wouldn't you think? The operator at your stepson's answering service remembers hearing a woman's voice. Mr. Mason, don't you know anything? An answering service has two real functions. One is to put you on hold, and the other is to write down your message incorrectly. Will there be anything else? I wouldn't be at all surprised. You look very comfortable in your father's chair. I am. What can I do for you, Mr. Mason? I was wondering why your stepmother called you the night of the murder. Well, you already asked Linda that question, didn't you? Now I'm asking you. Why? To see if we say the same thing? That's part of it. Well, why would you care what Linda and I discussed? I want to know who hired the killer that murdered your father, that's all. I'd suggest you and Linda get your story straight before the trial.
The band was silver with these big chunks of turquoise on it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know the one you mean. Had one with either a man or a woman's watch set into it. Have you sold many of them? Mm, well, four, five. Four or five in the last couple of months. By any chance did you sell one to a man about 35, receding hairline, long sideburns, and really piercing blue eyes about mm, this tall? Blue eyes. Yes, you know, I think I do remember selling one to someone like that. Why? He lost it in the bar where I work. He seemed like a good guy, and the watch looked like it cost a fortune. It did. <laughs> do you have it? No. No, my boss has it. And he won't return it until somebody claims it. Hmm? If you could just give me the guy's name. Oh, no, I don't think I should do that. <sighs> Miss, this is the fourth store I've tried. I'm tired and I'm not going to argue with you. If you don't give me the name, as far as I'm concerned, my boss can just keep the okay, watch. Okay, okay, okay. Let me see if I've got the credit card slip. What in the world? the killer, you won't need to go to court. You know where to find him? As a matter of fact, I do. Where is he? I'll show you. No, you'll tell me where he is and you'll wait here, understand? Absolutely. I mean, you're agreeing with me? I've learned my lesson. You think that makes any difference? You think the cops are really going to care about that? Terrific.
Tell him, how many times have we done this? Every time is like the first time for me. Well, hi, Della. Mr. Mason. Don't you look handsome. We're doing court in a half an hour. I doubt they'll start without us. There's something I want to say before we start. Just so it's not a confession. Well, it is sort of, sort of an apology. I know I've been kind of a jerk. I'll sort of accept your apology. Look, I've, I've always had a temper. I, maybe, maybe that's why I was so good at hockey in the beginning. I am sure it wasn't brains. Hell, I'd never even gotten through college on my own. Ken pulled me through. He's a good friend. Probably better than I deserve. Look, the only thing I've ever been able to do really well is hockey. When I got hurt, and all of a sudden I lost that, I hated everybody, because I, uh, well, I felt like I didn't have anything left. That's, that's why I acted the way I did. I see. I mean, at first, I, I didn't even care whether I won or lost the case. No. Now I, well, I appreciate all you've done, all you're doing. I just wanted you to know that before we start. And I want to win. Well, let's do exactly that. Tell me, Lieutenant, after the arresting officers found People's Exhibit A under the seat in the defendant's car, what was done with it? I sent it up to the lab for a ballistics check. And what did you find? We found that we had a perfect match. That gun was positively identified as the one that was used to shoot and to kill Thatcher Horton. Thank you, Lieutenant. No further questions at this time, Your Honor. I do reserve the right to recall. Mr. Mason. Yes, Your Honor. I always have questions of Lieutenant Brock. Lieutenant Brock, how many times was the deceased shot? Three times, Mr. Mason. How close were the entry points of the bullets? Here's the coroner's report for your recollection. Uh, just a moment. Mr. Molansky, with the court's permission? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Molansky will be standing at the same distance Thatcher Horton was from the killer, assuming you to be the killer. Now, Lieutenant, I ask you once again, how close were the three entry points? The three shots came all within a diameter of two inches, Mr. Mason. About the size of a silver dollar. Quite a shot. You're a trained marksman, Lieutenant. Could you do that? Not on my best day, Mr. Mason. Shots would have to be almost simultaneous, wouldn't they? Otherwise, if the victim moved, turned, or fell, the target area would change. That is correct. Could you get off three rounds that quickly, Lieutenant? Well, probably not, but Mr. Mason, I'm not a professional athlete. I don't have the defendant's hands, I don't have his eyes, or I don't have his reflexes, sir. Very well, Lieutenant. You just mentioned the defendant's physical capabilities. Dr. McLeod, would you please stand? Dr. McLeod has been attending Robert Spencer for several years. He's prepared to testify that two years ago, the defendant injured his right hand. It then became arthritic, leaving his trigger finger with limited mobility. Uh, thank you, doctor. If that is true, how could Robert Spencer fire quickly enough to hit that target as it moved? Objection. Speculation. Your Honor, the lieutenant has investigated, what, dozens of shootings? Well, no, I said more. 
closer to 100, Mr. Mason. I suggest he more than qualifies as an expert. I'll allow it. Thank you. Now, Lieutenant, in your expert opinion, could a marksman with an arthritic condition and impaired mobility to his trigger finger have fired those three shots quickly enough to have hit that target as it moved? Probably not, Mr. Mason. Well, Lieutenant, if he couldn't hit the target, he couldn't kill the target. No further questions. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Lieutenant, is there any reason the accused couldn't have fired with his left hand? Objection calls for speculation. I'll allow it. Fair is fair, Mr. Mason. He could have, the defendant could have used his left hand. What about accuracy? Well, there again, at the distance in question, it would depend on how steady the hand, how good the eyes. Now, if a good athlete was motivated, he very easily could have done it. All hypothetically speaking, of course. No more questions, Your Honor. Mr. Mason, recross? Uh, no recross, Your Honor. You may step down, Lieutenant Brock. Ms. August? The people rest, Your Honor. Lieutenant. Nice dollar. Mr. Mason, is the defense prepared to call his first witness? Yes, Your Honor. Defense calls Kathy Grant. Miss Grant, would you please tell the court how well you knew the deceased? We were business associates. We were attempting to put together a women's tennis project. The project was scrapped, was it not? Yes, it was. We have information that Thatcher Horton was planning to get married again. Can you tell us to whom? How would I know? Because you were involved in his plans. Now, Thatcher Horton planned to get married again. So I ask you again, would you tell us to whom? All right, well, he did ask me to marry him, but I didn't take him seriously. But Mr. Horton was certainly a serious man, was he not? He spoke to his lawyers about divorcing his wife, did he not? Yes, well, he told me he did. He also mentioned naming me in a new will. A new will? Hmm. Then suddenly he broke things off. Then, within weeks, your business partnership with him collapsed. All that is true, is it not? No, no, that's not true. Isn't it true that you were personally and professionally betrayed by him? Isn't it true that when you demanded he compensate you, he refused? I learned the hard way what Thatcher was really like, but I didn't kill him. As a matter of fact, he didn't break it off with me. I told him I wouldn't marry him. Wouldn't marry him or couldn't marry him? Couldn't marry him. One of the wealthiest men in the country, the single most powerful man in sports. Now, what could you possibly say in the way of rejection? I had told him I was already married. I married a boy who was in the Air Force when I was 16. We didn't tell anyone because I was so young. He got his wings about the same time I turned pro. One day he was on a routine mission. There was an accident. He lost both of his legs. He told me I could go out and date. We could get a divorce. When Thatcher asked me to marry him, I thought about it, but I couldn't go through with it. I couldn't get a divorce. I knew it would kill him. I couldn't do that. I'm very sorry. 
No further questions. The witness is excused. This being the hour for our lunch recess, court will adjourn until one o'clock. State your name for the record, please. Linda Horton. Mrs. Horton, you are the widow of the deceased? I am. We were married for nearly five years. And would you describe your marriage as a happy one? I would describe it as successful. You just heard Kathy Grant testify that your husband asked her to marry him. How does that square with your definition of a successful marriage? I know nothing about that. You had no indication? None. No intuition? None. Absolutely. Mrs. Horton, I find it difficult to believe a bright, sensitive woman like yourself had no idea her husband was about to divorce her. Mr. Mason, my husband was notorious for his liaisons. In my experience, he took them to bed, not to the altar. Uh, Your Honor, may I have a moment? Yes, Mr. Mason. Now, you say you didn't know your husband was about to divorce you. But you do know about your husband's will. I have a copy of it right here. Just obtained from the clerk's office. I'd like to have it marked as defendants next in order. Without objection, so order. This document makes you equal with your husband's son, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Approximately, what would that share be worth? I couldn't say. Come now, in round numbers, in excess of $100 million? I suppose so. But if your husband left you, if not for Kathy Grant, then for another woman, your prenuptial agreement would provide you with $500,000 a year for three years, but you would inherit nothing. I suppose. Wouldn't you also suppose that you're much better off with your husband dead than alive? At least a hundred million dollars better off? Objection. Speculation, argumentative, and harassing the witness. I really would like to answer that, if you don't mind. The court will allow it. I had an intuition you might bring this up. So, I came prepared. This is a copy of the most recent will that my husband drew. His lawyer will file that for probate today. He gave me that several weeks ago. You'll notice that his son, Stuart, gets everything. I inherit nothing. For which you have my deepest condolences. I would imagine your grief would only be eased by another marriage. This one, perhaps to your stepson. Objection. Sustained. I have no more questions of this witness.
Hello? Amy, do you have any idea what time it is? Where the hell are you? What? In that room over there. How'd you find him? It was easy. How easy? Well, first of all, I assumed he was still in town since you'd heard him demanding a payoff. I didn't think he'd leave until he got it, which could take some time. So far, I'm with you. The only thing I knew for certain was that he wouldn't go back to the warehouse. So I deduced that since he was in hiding, he wouldn't have access to his own phone. So you decided to stake out every payphone in town? I staked out the phone he was using. That one. How'd you find it? the phone company i thought he might be using a credit card turns out i was right a motherly type the local branch helped me out after i sort of explained to her that there he is let's go sherlock you say the sweetest things don't tell anybody somebody to pick up the money Horton's son it's gotta be call the cops Getting any information from that one. 
Interesting that the hitman had a key to the arena itself, but not to the executive offices. Well, sir, that's probably because there are more arena keys floating around, in which case that would make them easier to steal. But when he gets inside, it's not to meet anyone. He wanted something from Stuart Horton's office. I wonder what he was after. That we will never know. Good night, all. I know people who would call that withholding evidence. He dropped it before he was shot. Why don't you tell the good lieutenant we'd like to study it for a couple of hours? Great. I'll order some coffee. Very hot. Very black. <laughs> you really think that this could be the answer? At this point, it had better be. Your Honor, I'd like to place this item in evidence as defense exhibit number seven. May I see it, Mr. Mason? Mr. Mason. Yes, Your Honor, I call Stuart Horton to the stand. Mr. Horton. You are the only child and sole heir of the deceased, are you not? I am, but I didn't know anything about that new will until yesterday when my stepmother took it from her purse. I see. You uh, worked for your father, did you not? I was vice president of his company. Large title, modest paycheck. Well, I was being trained to take over. But with that modest paycheck, you support a penthouse here in town? Yes. A ski house in Aspen? Beach house in California? That's true. Objection. Even for one of Mr. Mason's great fishing expeditions, we seem to be on a rather long line of irrelevancy here. Mr. Mason, I agree with the prosecution. I'm about to connect up, Your Honor. Quickly, Mr. Mason. How do you manage to live so well on so little, Mr. Horton? I inherited quite a lot of money from my mother. But you gambled that away, did you not? In fact, there was quite an unpleasant moment with your father over your betting on sports, was there not? He told me to stop, and I did. <clears throat> your Honor, I would like the clerk to show Mr. Horton defense exhibit number seven. Certainly, Miss Jackson. Now, Mr. Horton, would you examine that notebook, please, and tell me if you recognize it? I don't. You don't recognize it? No. Even if I told you the man who was shot last night in your sports arena, took it from the desk in your office? I've never seen it before. That brings me to my last order of business with you, Mr. Horton. I'm going to ask you about your relationship with your stepmother. Is it not true that you and your stepmother are lovers? Yes. I can't hear you. We're lovers. You hated your father, did you not? Yes. You hated him so much, you felt so humiliated by him, that you made love to his wife in his own house. Yes. I made love to her. Yes, I hated him. But I didn't kill him. I didn't kill him. I have no further questions. But I reserve the right to recall this witness, Your Honor. No questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Horton. Mr. Mason. I call Temple Brown. Mr. Brown. You're a member of Mr. Horton's basketball team, are you not? 
Miss Wright? Two years ago, you were even voted onto the all-star team, weren't you? I was one of the top scorers in the league. One of the all-time greats. Now, would you please examine this notebook? Never seen it. Suppose I told you that the man who stole that book from Stuart Horton's desk was a hired killer. The same hired killer who shot and killed Thatcher Horton. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's just a notebook with some scribbles in it. But very interesting scribbles. Would you please read the top line? Boston by at least four fifty thousand dollars. Would you identify this bank statement for the record? It's mine. Marked as defendants next in order. Now. What is that deposit there? $50,000. $50,000. Made the day after your team lost to Boston. Suppose I told you I could match up at least 25 games last year with point spreads listed in this book and deposits in several of your accounts. I don't know. Mr. Brown, I am sorry. I'm sorry about you. You're a cheat. You threw games, shaved points, you broke faith with your teammates, you broke faith with your friends and loved ones, but most of all, with the fans who believed in you, all for money. You made plenty. You wanted more. Maybe. Maybe I did. But that's no reason to kill old man Horton. Exactly. No reason to kill Thatcher Horton. Every reason to kill his son, Stuart. That's crazy. Mr. Brown, what would happen to a professional basketball player found betting on games? Suspension. For how long? I don't know. Maybe a year, maybe life. If I don't miss my guess, Stuart Horton found out you were betting on basketball games. He threatened you with a suspension. He then got you to shave points. After that, there was just no turning back. Are you making this up as you go along? Objection. Speculation. Mr. Mason is fishing again. I tend to agree with the counselor. You do seem to be fishing, Mr. Mason. Your Honor, uh, Counselor, uh, I'll tie this up in a minute. Very well, you may proceed, Mr. Mason. Objection over rules. Now, Mr. Brown, you hired that hitman to kill Stuart Horton, did you not? The killer shadowed him until he knew his habits, waiting for the right moment. Do you know what he found? I don't know anything. He found out every time the father left town, the son came over and slept with his wife. And that was the moment he picked for the kill. That's not true, none of it. The father came home unexpectedly, but the killer couldn't know that. All he could see through the curtains was the shadow. Your hired killer killed the wrong man. I don't know what you're talking about. Mr. Brown, your hitman stole that notebook. That notebook and your bank statement ties you to him. It ties you to the murder. When you heard the wrong man was killed, you had to frame somebody fast. You'd heard my client threaten the father. You'd seen him that night on his way to being drunk. It couldn't have been too hard for you or Richards to follow him home and plant the murder weapon. That's just not so. Well, here is something that is so. Your friend, Mr. Richards, died last night in a gun battle with the police. This morning he received 
We received some startling news. Ballistics discovered that the bullet that killed him did not come from a police revolver. It came from this gun. This gun, which I would like to enter as defendants next in order. You recognize this gun, Mr. Brown? Lieutenant Brock and my associate, Mr. Molansky, found this gun in your locker. You killed Mr. Richards. After Richards shot the wrong man, he tried to blackmail you. So you followed him. You found him the same time as the police, and you made sure, you made very sure, that he was dead. You had one man killed. You killed another. And next, you had to kill Stuart Horton. Who were you going to kill after that, Mr. Brown? And for what? You think you're so smart. You know what it's like being booed? Thousands of fans yelling at you that you crap when you know you can make that shot? Sports writers just calling you names when you know in your heart you still got the stuff. Forced to lose when you know you're a winner. That's like. But I, I didn't mean for old man. I want a lawyer. Your Honor, I move all charges against my client be dismissed. The people concur, Your Honor. Defense motion granted. Lieutenant Brock, take this witness into custody for questioning. This court stands adjourned. Thank you. I've got a lot to be thankful for. Give me another chance. I won't waste it. I'm sure you won't. <laughs> You were wonderful, Mr. Mason. Congratulations. No, oh, thank you. May we give you two a word of advice? Of sure. I believe there was a minor disagreement. Uh, it was nothing. Amy, you feel Ken doesn't have any confidence in you. That's right. Ken. You feel as if Amy has invaded your area of capability and expertise. <laughs> I wouldn't put it that way. I would. May we both point out that both of you, in your separate and individual ways, contributed to the solution of this case. You both were right. Take it from us. Never end a day where one of you is wrong. Today was a great day, and both of you were right. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you. <laughs>